today. Nancy Pelosi continues to contradict the Biden administration on Taiwan. Kansas voters strike down a pro-life amendment. And Demi Lovato is once again a woman. I don't know, maybe. It's complicated. Actually, it's not. But we'll get into it all, and it all starts right now. Welcome to the news and why it matters. I am Sarah Gonzalez, and it is, of course, hump day, which means we have Blaze TV's own Elijah Schaefer, host of Slightly Offensive. It's true. They also call me Paul Blart Jr. So I'm like, I'm a mob yep. cop that went on a little bit of a diet. But yeah, why what do you think of the stash? That? I. Does it make you uncomfortable? Yeah. It's a power move. It does. It is a power move. Jorge you know Ventura, <laughs> reporter from the Daily Caller, in he studio has, again. That's, that's like a little, uh, that's like a little Got the nice South caterpillar. Texas tan going. You are very tan. Yeah, you yeah. call that being Mexican where I'm from, but <laughs> you do you. Yeah, I don't know how I feel about the mustache. Viewers, let us know in the comments yeah. what you think about uh, the stash. You heard of the Elijah third eye. Sporting. What about the third uh, eyebrow? <laughs> so it's an, enli- it's an enlightening thing. You know what it does? It, it turns heads, not always for good reasons. Right, that's right. What, that's been my entire life. It's like people do watch me, not because they like me, but they do watch. <laughs> Being a bad example is still an example. Fair. Fair. Um, all right, so I want to get into, before we get in trouble, the headlines of the day. So we covered on the program yesterday, Jorge was here. We talked about uh, this al-Qaeda leader being killed by the State Department. Well, the State Department has now issued a warning to Americans overseas to be on high alert following the killing of this al-Qaeda leader. They said uh, that there is, quote, a higher potential for anti-American violence after Zawari's death and that current information suggests terrorist groups are plotting attacks against U.S. interests in multiple regions across the globe, uh, end quote. So they said that this could be a variety of tactics. It could come in the form of suicide operations, assassinations, kidnappings, hijackings, and bombings. Um, Look. Here's the thing. Um, We talked about this, Jorge, you'll remember. We talked about this yesterday, that it sounded really cool. It always sounds really cool for a president to say, yeah, we got a terrorist. We killed him. And you're like, cool. But then as we started reading all of the uh, terrorist Mm -hmm. uh, analysts, they would say, well, actually, this was kind of just a byproduct of the Biden administration's completely uh, screwing up the pullout in Afghanistan. And that was what allowed these terrorists to take root here again. And now we are faced with this problem again. Uh, and the State Department says, uh, be careful, because as it turns out, these people actually really want to kill you really badly and will do whatever it takes to follow through with that. Yeah, who would have thought that killing a beloved leader of a a terrorist group would put Americans overseas at threat of danger? I'm not exactly a um, foreign, um, you know, operative specialist or anything Mm -hmm. like that, but I'm just going to say, usually I would think if you're going to use bombs or, you know, a drone strike uh, to murder somebody that people like, they might be angry. Like, I don't know. I mean, some people here, if they used a a, a drone strike to to kill your spouse, you wouldn't be that angry because you got to work on that, get counseling. But for the most (laughs) of us, if someone we liked got got a drone strike. But I will say, you know, besides Biden having like, you know, I always say worse pullout game than than a uh, guy on prom night. Honestly, he's genuinely, he totally messed up that Afghanistan issue. The funny thing about this was, was that we were told that he conquered al-Qaeda that we got out of Afghanistan, but this guy was like a head leader mm. of like main terror operations. And he was living next to the U.S. Embassy, which I found to be so funny, living his best life possible. And so it's like, really, how much control do we have? We're back to just waging war, killing mm-hmm. people. And my question is, do we know how many kids were killed in this strike or civilians? No. Did we ever get that? Well, that's what I was just saying, too, Legends. We have to be careful because last year when Biden did an, an airstrike in Syria, he, you know, they always want to come yeah. up with the U.S. government. Oh, no civilians were killed. And it was and found out in a New York Times investigation they killed like 12 kids in mm-hmm. Syria. So it's, same thing with this one, right? They did the strike. CIA always has to come out. Oh, we didn't kill anyone. I'm, I'm, I doubt that. I'm really going to wait till see if we kill any civilians and children. They're like yeah. spending money and killing brown children. And we wonder At why weddings. brown people in the Middle East hate us. Yes. Yeah, it's like, I wonder why, I wonder why Arabs don't like the U.S. so much. It's like, hmm, let me look at the last 50 years of foreign policy. <laughs> I mean, we are killing their children. Yeah. That might be a little bit of it. Um, so yesterday... Peter Ducey, again, the only one asking the tough questions in the White House press briefing room, uh, asked John Kirby why the Biden administration handed uh, Afghanistan over to the Taliban last year. Here is that response. So we know that the Taliban was harboring the world's most wanted terrorist. 
You guys gave a whole country to a bunch of people that are on the FBI most wanted list. What did you, you think was going to happen? I would take issue with the premise that we gave a whole country to terrorist groups. I, I mean, again, I'd, 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 I'd encourage you to ask. The world's number one terrorist. How is that not giving a country to a, a terrorist sympathizing group, uh, if not giving them permission to have terrorists just... Well, sit on a balcony. The, the question, I mean, Peter, the way you asked that, it makes it sound like we owned Afghanistan a year ago. It wasn't our country. Okay, so, but then why were we there? Because he acts like he doesn't understand the entire premise of the question, which was like, well, we were there so that this kind of crap didn't happen, obviously. We can talk about wh whether or not it was right. Uh, I wasn't a fan of being in Afghanistan, but to completely ignore the premise of the question as if, like, well, we didn't own the country. Okay, well, why were we there for 10 million years? Like, That's I a mean, married uh, man. That's a married man, because you can tell he's been asked this question before. <laughs> so what were you doing with the boys when I saw that uh, Snapchat picture with the girls with the bottle service in the bikini? Wait, sorry, you're saying, I did, what did I do with the boys? Huh? I'm home, am I, am I not? <laughs> I'm here. <laughs> I didn't yeah. do anything. I got you, like, the, the, the look of guilt on his face, right? It's like a movie almost, where it's like, how did we not give billions of dollars of equipment to a terrorist group? <clears throat> we equipped them. Like, do we not <laughs> learn from the Russians during the 1980s? Did we not learn with the Soviets literally equipping these enemies? And then we equipped them as well. Remember, we, we created these terrorist groups. The CIA created these terrorist groups back in the 80s and in the 90s. They, they re-equipped re them. Uh, and then we're here, and then we just gave them an update. It's like we, we like a computer programmer and the software needed a patch update and we're like oh I'm sorry you don't have night vision goggles and you uh, you're still using AK-47s you don't have uh, any Armalite or any sort of a, uh, automatic rifles let's give you something new let's give you a lighter a more advanced uh, version of, of, of firearms for free you can mm -hmm. have it all plus the ammo and the tanks and the helicopters and you're like yeah we literally armed a terrorist group I think it was on purpose I think destabilization is part of the plan genuinely mm -hmm. because Trump was on on video recently saying like you're telling me putting some fuel in a plane and flying it a few you know, thousand miles or a few hundred miles into Israel or into a, some sort of an ally country is more expensive than giving a multi-million dollar plane to a terrorist group? That's what they were saying, right? It's cheaper to leave the equipment than it was right. to take it. So we not only gave them a country, we, we gave an army. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, that's genuinely like the sad part is like anybody who wanted to change things in the country, well, they're armed and they're ready and they're, they're killing people. I mean, it's crazy. Yeah. What I love about Kirby's answer, it's like, well, we didn't own Afghanistan, but uh, we <laughs> occupied it for 20 right. years it's and like, committed uh, war crimes <laughs> and protected their opium fields, but we didn't own the thing. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> guys. Gotta, gotta kill those white people in Ohio with the fentanyl. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. we gotta That's make sure a genuine we keep answer uh, I could ever possibly think of. So, Give him credit, though. Yeah. The level of BS is was like astoundingly like. I remember, I'm clown pilled again. I've told you this because mm -hmm. it got so black pilled again. To remind, this is your first time watching the show. <laughs> black pill, you lose hope. Clown pill, you start to laugh because it's so insane. You couldn't make it up yourself if you wrote a script. Right. Like this is this is theatrical. Hollywood level performancing like of, of BS. I, this is really good stuff. Like I'm taking notes. <laughs> I mean, if Hollywood was. Well, some of Hollywood is really bad at what yeah. they do. So no, they this have is the Hollywood, that's Hollywood really bad. The, the government kills the children. So that's, <laughs> that's, the, that's the difference. Take whole life. I would get on to you, but you're not wrong. <laughs> um, so another reporter asked John Kirby during this press briefing yesterday why Nancy Pelosi, you know, Nancy Pelosi goes to Taiwan. Nancy Pelosi keeps saying uh, America stands with Taiwan. And in the, it, like at the same time, uh, simultaneously, John Kirby's like, we do not support Taiwan independence. So a reporter was like, why do you guys have differing uh, views on this? What's, what's the rub here? Here's that answer. You keep telling us that U.S. policy hasn't changed and that the United States does not support an independent Taiwan. And yet, if we look at what Speaker Pelosi tweeted from the ground in Taiwan, her post actually states, quote, America stands with Taiwan. We all know that Taiwan harbors uh, ambitions for independence. When the Speaker of the House says, we stand with Taiwan, America stands with Taiwan, how can the Chinese construe that as anything else but that you're supporting independence? I'll let the Speaker speak for herself. Um, all I can tell you, James, is what I told you yesterday, uh, and I'm happy to repeat it. Nothing has changed about our adherence to the One China policy. Nothing has changed about uh, our stance on Taiwan independence, which is that we do not support Taiwan independence. Hmm. 
uh, interesting moment between the two of them. So I, I want to I want to throw these two uh, kind of additions to the story into the equation. So. We, why is Nancy Pelosi there, right? What could potentially explain Nancy Pelosi's interest in Taiwan? Oh, I don't know. I mean, she does love money a lot and has made quite a bit, her and her husband have made quite a bit as she has held office for the 10 million years that she's been in Congress. Uh, she made sure to meet with one of Taiwan's most important business leaders. This is Mark Liu, chairman of the Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company, the world's biggest chip maker and Taiwan's largest semiconductor manufacturer. Uh, apparently during the meeting, they discussed the United States recently passed Chips and Science Act. This is all according to Taiwanese media. And that this new legislation, we talked about it on the show when it came up, uh, includes $52 billion to support shipmaking in the United States. And this particular company, TSMC, will likely be among its beneficiaries due to the $12 billion chip factory it's planning to build in Arizona. So, um, by wow. the way, let me just let me just throw this in there. Just, I'm just I'm just absorbing. Paul Pelosi just last week sold up to $5 million worth of computer chip stock uh, and lost hundreds of thousands of of dollars. This is according to Jorge, the, the Daily Caller News Foundation's uh, report on his stock purchases ahead of this vote subsidizing chip manufacturers. Um, so he decided to sell the shares at a loss rather than allow the misinformation in the press regarding this trade to continue. Um, but uh, this is probably going to be the new, so they are going to supply this particular stock that Paul Pelosi sold. I feel like I need a Glenn chalkboard to explain this. Mm -hmm. This particular stock that Paul Pelosi sold, uh, they're probably going to be responsible, the TSMC, for supplying uh, NVIDIA Corporation with all of the GPUs. Um, it's just all interesting how all of these webs sort of weave together. Again, public office, I don't think you're the, the salary, what is it, $175,000 mm -hmm. uh, to be in Congress and live in Washington, D.C.? Um, that doesn't go very far, and somehow Nancy and Paul Pelosi are worth quite a bit of money. I wonder if it has anything to do with these types of meetings. Yeah, well, up until about a month ago, $175,000 in D.C. bought you three gallons of gas. So at least <laughs> now we can get six on that amount, but it's not enough to live, honestly. And I don't, it, it always shocks people that are not from uh, big liberal cities that don't understand the genuine cost of what it is. And, and so you'll always have this person being like, dude, I'm doing fine on 30 or 40 grand. And I'm like, and yeah, and that's good for you. And I'm happy about that. But you don't realize like in San Francisco, I think if you're making under 110,000, you're considered uh, actually in poverty. So, mm -hmm. and that sounds crazy to somebody based on if they don't live there. But when you actually go there, you go, oh, that's why there's so many homeless and whatnot. Because right. the, the basic threshold of living is so high that it's almost impossible to break in. And I think even right now in Dallas, they're saying like to live a, a, a comfortable middle class life in a decent neighborhood and to own a home, you need like a collective income over five years of $275,000 right now in, uh, in Dallas. And that's in Dallas. And that's yeah. actually shocked people. So yeah, these people making hundreds of millions of dollars off of $175,000, I mean, you are definitely into some corrupt things. Now, when you have like Kirby and Pelosi saying different things, I feel like this is just like drunk mom and like, and like serial cheater dad kind of fighting. You know what I mean? They're distant and you're trying to get their favor. They can't make it up. But this shows you even how divided our country is. Like the own, our, our administration, the regime itself, can't even align with the legislature of their own party mm -hmm. on what we think about a, a nation state. I've been to Taiwan. I ate Asian food in Taiwan. I am officially an Asian, okay? I don't even think that, Kenichiwa is probably Japanese or something. I don't know anything. That's called cultural appropriation. Oh, I love appropriating all things that are wrong. But I will say on top of that is that Taiwan is absolutely an independent country. And the most important thing about this is, is it's two parts. Number one, okay, so our, our regime doesn't recognize it. More Americans recognize Taiwan as a legitimate country than Ukraine. And more Americans would, would believe in, in sending money to help a war with, like, with Taiwan defense than Ukraine, because Taiwan actually benefits us in many ways outside of the corrupt uh, supporting our elites. Like, like Ukraine, it's only matters because of the money funneling and the laundering. We get computer chips, our cars, our computers, everything relies on Taiwan. We have a lot of phones, a lot of software, and we share a lot of cultural ideas. They're one of the top 10 mm -hmm. democracies, but on top of, in the entire world actually rated. But on top of that, the other issue with this is, is that it is so sad that the taxpayers are paying, I think it's what, $60 million, right, for this trip? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They're paying $60 million of American money once again to accomplish what? the personal interests of a politician. So you think it's bad that she's making money independently. She's not only making that money by her salary, she's making it off your $60 million. Mm. Like that's way heavier than the 175,000 I'm thinking. Yeah.
Um, by the way, good luck to Paul Pelosi, who is going through the DWI. Um, so more information. I know we got to take a break, but I got to bring this up. More information uh, has been released on this police report. So the uh, the officer thought that he had a drug in his system, as well as the alcohol that he very clearly had emanating from his breath. And uh, apparently when he handed over his driver's license, he also handed. Can you imagine Paul Pelosi just discreetly like handing over or probably not discreetly? his driver's license and a copy of his 1199 foundation card, which is uh, a found it's a charity for the California Highway Patrol that supports officers and provides scholarships for their children. So he's over there like, yeah, I might have just been doing a bunch of drugs and drinking. But uh, here's my 1199 foundation card. <laughs> if you could just let me go, that would be really great. And apparently they didn't. So um I can't wait to see what happens. Could not have happened to a better uh, couple. I'll just put it that way. We've got much more to come. First, we want to thank our sponsor, Tommy John. So it's still really hot in Texas. It's like a thousand degrees. If you are somewhere where it is super hot during the summer, which is basically all of the United States right now, you gotta check out all of the comfort wear from Tommy John. They've got stuff for men and women, so it doesn't matter which gender you are, which gender you are. You can find something at Tommy John. You've, they've got bras, bralettes for women. They've got loungewear. Uh, they've got underwear for both men and women, and boxers, loungewear for men. It is literally the softest thing you will ever put on your body. And I thought the people were blowing smoke whenever they said that, and I hadn't tried it yet. And then I got some myself, and I was like. Oh, they weren't joking. This actually is amazing. And I have to change into it every time that I go home so that I can deal with all of the craziness of having two children. You got to go to shop, uh, shop, shoptommyjohn.com slash Y for 20% off of your first order. That is 20% off over at tommyjohn.com slash Y. See site for details. In a ruling released on Friday, a judge struck down a San Francisco city ordinance allowing non-citizens to vote in school board elections. So wow. this is happening in several pockets across the country. New York is also one of them. But uh, this allowed so non-citizen parents of school-aged children to vote in school board elections. It was approved in 2016. It took effect in 2018 and was extended indefinitely, of course, in 2021. It was challenged by several groups. And uh, look, the, the plaintiffs argue the state of California has a longstanding requirement that voters must be United States citizens. This re uh, requirement applies to every election in the state. And the court agreed. Um, so uh, I'm hoping that this is a uh, what? It makes me just angry hearing this. Like, doesn't that, anyone watching this or listening? That they've been able this, to do that for so doesn't long? Doesn't just piss you off? And, and, I, and I'm not going to sound that boomer con that's just like, this is really grinds my gears. But like, I mean... The idiocy, like, do you ever just look at the government and these people and you go, this is the exact opposite of anything basic. If, if you don't like the government, like Jason, who's usually on here on Wednesdays, mm -hmm, doesn't, mm -hmm. even if you don't like it, you can at least agree that the most basic form of government should be something that is common sense. Mm -hmm. Like, at least just a common sense understanding or a mutual agreement between people so that we can peaceably get along. Citizenship makes sense. Membership in churches makes sense. I'm a membership of Costco, damn it. Like, I can't even <laughs> buy a, a 24 pack of smart waters without showing my ID to get in. And it's like, if, if, it's, if it's easier to get a government job than it is for me to buy a bulk pack of flushable baby wipes, then what's the point of government? How, value, how valuable is government? And it's just the saddest thing to see. And, and, and this is a real issue. Nobody understands this that does not live in LA. And I want to be clear with this, and I'll, you can fact check me, Reuters, you know, because uh, I still think that Joe Biden left Jill Biden to go after an ice cream truck. I believe that's actually true. Um, in L.A., in certain zip codes, there is a two to one ratio of illegal aliens in certain zip codes, mm -hmm. especially in East L.A. and in Central L.A., and you would know this being from L.A. When you go there, and this is why, this is the most, they say it's racist, but it's true. The people there are like, they look like they're, um, what are those little small people from uh, The Wizard of Oz? Uh, munchkins. Yeah. Yes. They're literally like this, no, they're not even Mexican. They're like, they're like native people from <laughs> Wait, the hills. Wait, what? No, I'm saying that, no, you know what I'm talking about. They're like, they're like native people. There's entire zip codes where they're like native people from the hills of Mexico. And they're like, they're like, they're like four foot four, four foot five, like seven to 10 children. They, and they rent they're not even homes. Mexican, Jorge. No, they're not. They're like, they're indigenous people down there. 
and Jeez. and they're they're tiny. Like, you never even see these people in anywhere else in the country. And it's like it looks like an entirely different nation. You go there, there no one speaks English. They're literally just like it's its own world. They have their own bodegas and shops on the side. You feel like you're in a third world country. And it's like and, and I'm not even joking. Here's the crazy thing. And then they rent these houses and they live like they're in a third world. They put up sheets and they rent to multiple families. It's this crazy thing that they have going on there. They literally have gangs that that siphon off parking spots so that you can't park certain places put uh they put like rocks and bricks and ice chests it's like a whole nother world so i'm saying and california has to find a way to live with these people because they're literally have they have separate nation states in los angeles like i've lived there and it's like you have countries within a country and you have el salvadorian and mexican gangs fighting each other and you have black gangs and mexican gangs it's a huge problem and it's like the, the solution isn't sanctioning the crime the solution mm -hmm. isn't sponsoring the crime the solution is acknowledging it, being honest about it, and stop calling people who want to acknowledge the truth racist. Yeah, Jorge. You know, what's interesting about the San Francisco move, um, a lot of those immigrant parents are not, um, they might vote Democrat, but they're not okay with the CRT, yep. the trans yep. Se yep. sexual education. So when you push that on these kind of immigrant parents, they, yep. s they really turn off from that. So I think San Francisco is like, well, maybe we don't want to be able to vote mm -hmm. right now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and mm -hmm. we kind of got to see that with Glenn Youngkin in Virginia with his victory of, this Hispanic movement with other minorities' parents saying, hey, uh, yeah, you know, we're okay with voting Democrat, but this whole, you know, my son could have a vagina, yeah, that's a, that's a little bit too much, so. I think that's a bridge the, too far. Yeah, that's a bridge for, too far. Mexicans aren't involved in it, but he's El Salvador. But it's interesting so what's happening it. in San Francisco because they just also had a recall of their DA, yeah. which was led by Asian American voters, which two thirds of them vote Democrat. So there's mm -hmm. something brewing in San Francisco I find quite interesting. Right I now. think it's all across the country, really. Yeah. I mean, we're seeing all of these polls coming out showing uh, Hispanics are leaving the Democrat Party in droves. Gosh, I can't imagine why. Maybe it's the stuff that he just brought up, which is like, they're not okay with uh, all of the schools trying to trans their children and teaching them all about how white people are racist uh, and everyone's racist against black people and all of these other crazy things that they're like doing. Like the GOP, a good strategy would literally just be going to East LA yeah. or going to LA or whatever and pulling a Hispanic person and then showing them the libs of TikTok Twitter timeline and they'll be like oh, okay i don't yeah i don't agree with any of that you know so yeah, yeah miss senorita latinks let me uh, educate you as a white male uh, <laughs> please dominance. white white explain to us yeah. um well I, I happen to think differently that it's not the crt stuff in the gender queer stuff that's really pushing hispanic votes i i think a lot of it was uh, number one, the lockdowns hurt a lot of the small business owners, and that's why the Asians were turning because they decimated pr predominantly. I mean, this is a, um, I don't know if anyone's ever watched documentaries on the rooftop Koreans, right? They have mm -hmm. a, they have, I'm not going to try to say the, the Korean word, but they have a word for, for that day, which symbolizes to them in Los Angeles the day when like police, National Guard, and the government let them down to great tragedy. Because if anyone remembers, there was a billion dollars worth of damage that happened during the, the, the riots that ha in Los Angeles, and 500 million of that and account for inflation, I'm not an economist, but let's just at least quadruple that today. So two billion <laughs> of the four billion damage were Korean owned and Asian owned businesses. So they've felt the brunt end mm. of, of government inadequacy and failing them. And I believe with the, the shutdowns, which also with the DAs led to an increase of crime against them, it's like, it's almost, it, I would almost be afraid to walk down the street as an Asian without a firearm in Los Angeles or, or in San Francisco, simply because of the hate crimes from black uh, people towards Asians, um, and then the government trying to blame white people for it, I would feel like back, I would start getting vibes or even remembrance of what happened back in the, in the Rodney King riots. Mm -hmm. So I mean like the Koreans and the Asians have been getting the, the, the short end of the stick for a while and I don't see any reason why they would continue to support these people. It happened in the 80s, 90s, well I think it was the 90s, right? The Rodney King, mm -hmm. uh, early 90s. Yeah. It's happened today, I mean it's the same thing. Why do you want it to happen 30 years from now again? Yeah. Um, all right. Well, let's get into, after we get back from the break, let's get into uh, what happened in Kansas with this pro-life amendment and some new, uh, a new report about what the Biden administration plans to do to support abortion. First, we want to get into uh, thanking our sponsor, Raycon. So look, when you have children at home like I do, earbuds are a must, all right? Because you got to know when, like, there's a lot of craziness going on and you got to tune it out at times. So I use my Raycon wireless earbuds to do this, listening to podcasts, listening to music, uh, listening to videos, whatever the case may be. And Raycons are superior because not only are you going to get awesome audio quality, you also, uh, they don't have the 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 stem that hangs out of your ears and it's just gonna weigh down your ear and it's gonna be weighted and fall out all the time. These have these optimized gel tips. They fit completely in your ear. You can barely see them and they've got the perfect in-ear fit so they are going to not 
budge, not even during my workouts. And let me tell you, those burpees kill me, but I keep my Raycons in, okay? They give you eight hours of playtime and a 32-hour battery life. Uh, they've got three customizable sound profiles. Uh, they've got noise isolation awareness mode. I use these. I bought them for my mom. My mom loves them as well. Everyone in my family loves Raycons. You got to go there. You're going to get premium audio uh, quality, premium earbuds at like a fraction of the cost of their competitors. Go to buyraycon.com slash why you'll get 15% off. That is B-U-Y, buyraycon.com slash why for 15% off. Voters yesterday evening rejected a pro-life amendment in Kansas. This is the kind of the first test of what voters' sentiment was following the overturning of Roe v. Wade by the Supreme Court. Uh, so it was called the Value Them Both Amendment. It was defeated by about 17 percentage points, and uh, it blocked the state from removing a right to abortion in the state constitution. Uh, Joe Biden made a statement, this vote makes clear what we know. The majority of Americans agree that women should have access to abortion and should have the right to make their own health care decisions. Um, and I just want to throw into the equation, this was just like, we almost lost it. I hate that there's like an hour and a half overlap between the time that we tape and uh, the time that this gets to you. And so we almost missed this. I'm glad we didn't. But uh, news just shook out earlier this afternoon that Joe Biden uh, signed an executive order directing HHS to consider working with states to use Medicaid waivers to pay for expenses for women who cross state lines to receive abortions. Uh, they also directed HHS to consider actions like providing technical assistance to make sure health care providers comply with non-discrimination laws. So Joe Biden uh, wants to, of course, spend your taxpayer money making sure that women can cross state lines to get abortions, because as we know, it is the most important thing in the Democrat Party to kill children. And if they do not kill your children in the womb, they will then just screw them up in the head by convincing them that they are one of the 10 million genders that they've made up. So um, look, what what is your, I want to I wanna touch on the, the executive order, but I do want to know what is your takeaway on this, this value them both amendment being defeated by that many percentage points in Kansas of all places. Jorge, I'm going to go to you first. It's a bit shocking because obviously I, I would expect Kansas to lean more Republican, conservative. Mm -hmm. um, with the executive order on uh, Biden, I would say it's, you know, when it, whenever it comes to like the inflation just issues that impact working class, there's never an executive order to like help those people out. We always have to right. do something along the lines of here. So for me, it's, it's what's the thing, working class getting left out. It also feels like Biden the Biden administration is kind of reaching for any type of political political victory that they could get at this point because they're just sinking down. Um, I just I really think they're just looking for anything to to boost some type of approval rating with whatever base that they have left. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Elijah. Um, I don't think there's any big issue on uh, on Kansas voting for this because it's like these states are, are so. Uh, depopulated that there's a lot of pull in the major cities. I think I explained this on your show that yeah. that if you go to a lot of these what the liberals call flyover states, which mm. are just red blooded states, you get a disproportionate amount of voting and pushing in these city centers, and there's very few of them that are actually very much liberal. Like I, I would say the main cities in a lot of these states are very much metropolitan because it's a natural influx. So let's say you're going to go move to Kansas or you live in Kansas and you tend to be progressive. You're not going to live in a rural county. You're going to move to the one center place that you can, which is going to be the main city. Now, unlike Texas that has Houston and Dallas and Fort Worth and Austin, et cetera, it's like a lot of these states have one major metropolitan area. And, you know, if you're good at not just gerrymandering, but if you're also good at, you know, active activism and whatnot, it's a lot easier to sway a state by taking control of one city than it is to control all of the major cities. So when you have a city that's, you know, and their major city might be a tenth of the size of Chicago or something. So some of these grassroots people, we have to be very careful because, mm -hmm. you know, you think, oh, well, we're all rural, but the amount of people that might turn out to vote rural might be low on certain referendums like this in a primary or referendum, and then you they get shocked because they're going, well, everyone I know would vote no on abortion. Right. Yeah, but there were you know six million dollars put into to uh, activism in the central city that swayed the the Democrat voters mm -hmm. in the area, and so you actually were able to vote for something that was against the will of the general populace. And I feel like that's a that's a problem like that we see in in schools and everywhere where people have become so accepted like well I'm fine and we're fine, but it's like yeah, but while you're fine and mm -hmm. your neighbors are fine. 
in our public schools, in our institutions, in our city centers, they've been hijacked by our yeah. enemies. And so that's that's where I feel the problem is. I, I also feel like there is just, the left has been so successful at um, pushing all of this misinformation about what all of these laws actually do, what this amendment would have done. Um, because at least here in Texas, I mean, we've covered this heavily on the show, that there are abortion activists out there who will lie and say, a woman who has an ectopic pregnancy can't get, uh, oh, yeah. you know, can't get medical treatment here in Texas. They can't get uh, an abortion. They have to cross state lines now. It's dangerous to them. They could die. There was a woman who went on. I'm not going to say her name right now because I've already given her far too much publicity than she deserves. And she's thriving. Well, she's not thriving off of it, but she's trying to hang on to it uh, until her last breath. But she went on CNN and said that um, that she had a miss. She had already had a miscarriage. There was no heartbeat. But Texas law made her wait and get multiple ultrasounds before she could get an, uh, 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 the procedure, the DNC procedure, to remove her miscarriage. And I'm like, that's not true. Right. The law is so clear, but these activists have been able to infiltrate and cause all of this misinformation. And they run these stories on CNN and MSNBC with absolutely no verification from doctors saying, yeah, that is the case. That actually did happen. And so people in America go... Well, I don't think it's right that they're making these laws that prevent women from being able to get health care if something goes wrong in order to save their life. That's not fair. That's like the handmaid's tale. And in actuality, it's not even really happening. They're just telling you that it's happening. And they've been so effective at messaging with all of their, you know, messaging arms like uh, the mainstream media that people get nervous and they go, no, we can't draw that line in the sand. Yeah. You know, I, I will I will bring it down to this. America is in an existential problem to where big cities breed um, a type of thinking where you get convenience at your at your front doorstep and you start to think that the government controls everything because quite frankly d cities are so dangerous they are so uh, crazy that you know that you're not in control of your own life I mean even just crossing the street when you were a kid you would look both ways and I look both ways now when I cross the street because the cities are dangerous to everybody mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I just parts of Dallas I won't even go into I mean Arlington etc I just stay away I from was these nervous places. about going to into a Dallas government building the other day because I'm like obviously I can't carry and you can't park on the premise so you have to like park in a parking lot and walk there and I'm like can I'm you, can highly you turn your gun in at the, at the front I don't believe so no I, I, no you can't but it's funny that you say yeah, that because I was, talking, you I was like talking to Steven about that your arm at the front like, that's like, what uh, we said like they should have like like a like lockers or something yeah for, like, I would think that I would think like just like an officer might you know yeah. surrender his firearm to enter into some sort of a proceeding or something like that that a citizen what 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 right does he have over us you know? right right yeah that's what I'm saying but like I felt very uncomfortable when I was walking to the government building knowing that I was like no idea mm -hmm. who these characters are around me and I have absolutely no protection in the event that they well, that's what I'm saying. It's, it's so bad, but I, I think there's so many of these things like that are ballot harvesting. Uh, there, you have the drop boxes. You have a lot of things that are out there that it's just you can manipulate and control people in these cities. That's why they want people in the cities. Why do you think that in China that they have a really hard time controlling the rural areas, mm -hmm. but they're very poor and they intentionally keep the rural areas poor, but they'll allow you an opportunity if you move into the cities, but then you have to join the surveillance system, get your QR code, mm -hmm. and you have to be under right. their heavy hand. So it's like that's what I'm saying. Like, people don't realize these cities. They're dangerous, and it's yeah. like, they're dangerous, they're scary, and honestly, with these red states, I feel really bad, because un unfortunately, I think we're going to see a lot more laws pass over the next coming decade due to heavy investment, activism, and great migrations into these city centers in, in you know, Tennessee, et cetera, mm -hmm. determining the fate of an entire red state. And that's like, that's like California. I mean, it's like you have a few major cities determining an entire agricultural or rural, rural state. You know, California is mostly rural. Yeah. It's, mo it's mostly a rural state, but it's just L.A., San Diego, and San Francisco determine the entire fate of the entire you know, state that's going to happen like in Kansas, everywhere else. Yeah, Jorge, last word. Yeah, you know, same thing with this is it's they're able to manipulate people with just headline reading. So it's yep. same thing with the don't say gay bill, right? Yep. It's like, oh my god, yep. you can't even say gay in a classroom. Same thing with this. It's yeah. just people read the headlines and they think that if uh, you know a woman travels across the line, she's going to put in jail for the rest of her life or right. something like that. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> she or that be. she's not allowed to have some sort of life saving procedure. That's not true. Um, but you know, leftist voters are I don't know.
not the sharpest uh, knives in the drawer, so they believe it. All right, we've got to take a quick break. First, we want to uh, remind you guys, if you have not headed over to blazesocks.com, don't miss out. You can get these. Uh, they've got these really cool socks. They've got Trump socks. They've got DeSantis socks. They've got uh, Klaus Schwab, Schwab socks. Uh, they've got it all, and uh, they're very soft. They're very comfortable. You can get 20% off if you go to blazesocks.com and use promo code Sarah Socks. By the way, uh, it's not Sarah Sucks. It's Sarah Socks, just so we're clear. And uh, if you don't have a Blaze TV subscription, you can save on that as well using that same promo code. It is blazesocks.com, a promo code Sarah Socks. Yesterday, Washington Post White House reporter Tyler Pager asked uh, Corinne Jean-Pierre, which, as we know, is the best example of affirmative action that we could ever give you, uh, asked her if it was a coincidence that Joe Biden's most successful week actually occurred during his isolation period with COVID. Watch. And this has been one of the most successful weeks of, of the president's uh, tenure in the White House so far. I'm wondering if it's just a coincidence that it's happened while well, he has largely been isolating in the White House. Um, you know, the chips bill has passed and historic agreement oh with Mr. Schumer. What are you trying um, to say? Well, yeah. I know. Wow. Finds it, uh, I mean, the president had a successful 2020 campaign where he was mostly working uh, from his home. Work from home has seemed to be successful for the president. Tyler, my goodness. Jeez. She did not see that coming. Oh, my gosh. Uh, the cynicism. Um, look, the, the president is going to continue to work for the American people regardless. It, you know, it doesn't matter where he is. Um, I hear I hear what you're saying. This is so beautiful because it is the Washington Post, as I pointed out. When you've lost the Washington yep. Post and you're a Democrat, where do you go? You've lost them all. Um, I want to play as well, before I get to you guys and, and your thoughts, I want to play as well. Joe Manchin, th this is not the first Democrat who has said this. I know you could say, well, Joe Manchin's kind of leaning right. Cori Bush won't say if she supports Joe Biden in 2024. Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez mm -hmm. won't say if she's supporting Joe Biden in 2024. His own vice president won't even say if she will support him in 2024. And so you have all of the spectrum. You have the radicals. You have uh, what they would hope to be called moderate. And, of course, you have Joe Manchin uh, getting upset when Andrea Mitchell asked him if he would support Joe Biden in 2024. Watch. I'm not talking about the 2022 election and 2024. I have no control over those elections. And I'm not going to talk about them that will skew one of the greatest pieces of legislation. And I'm very appreciative that the president has seen it. He's approved it. He supports it. God bless him for that. This is great for America. Yeah. Can't we do something for our country without well, having to bring politics into it? Well, you're, That's you're all. I'm Democratic, not going to talk about it. You're a Democratic I'm senator. About it. I'm, just, I'm just asking I'm you to support your it. own, the leader of your own party. I'm talking about it. I'm supporting this bill, Andrea. It's the American bill. It's the red, white, and blue American bill. So good. What is, what was the, Stephen will know in my ear. What was it that Nick Saban was answering when he was like, I'm not going to talk about it, so stop asking me. <laughs> quarterback oh controversy. Yeah. He sounded exactly like Joe Manchin there. <laughs> I'm not going to talk about it, so stop asking me. I'm not going to tell you if I support Joe Biden in 2024 because we all know he's about to die. <laughs> and he sucks. And we don't want to support him. God, that's embarrassing. I didn't know Joe Biden was still alive. <laughs> I, mean, like, I'm all right. I thought we already like had his funeral. I must be way out of touch because I thought he died back in like 2011. Um, and you know, when you see the corpse, uh, it's very good at Anna animatronics, you know. And they say that the Disney Imagineers are behind the current presidency and regime. And he's, he's very lifelike, you know. When he catches COVID for a fourth time, he's like, the air, the breathing in of the molecules of the spike proteins. I really love it. But people know this. I think it's funny to watch people laugh at Trump because Trump was right and they were prideful, but they laugh at Biden because they know Biden's not l alive. Like he's dead inside, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like, it, it's, you watch like the Germans make fun of Trump for saying that Germany needs to not be so dependent on Russian oil and for, for energy and natural gas. Um, and they're like, <laughs> like snarking at him in the UN. How's that working out for you, yeah. Germany? I think you've uh, lost a few times in the last century or so. That you should probably start uh, questioning your ability to determine your future. But at the same time, with Biden, I don't think anybody really believes he's the president in terms of like the the, the other leaders. And I don't, and again, we obviously know he won the election, so not that the kind of president. Safest and most secure election right. of all time. Right. Yes. As safe as a condom mm -hmm. with holes in it. But mm -hmm. I will say <laughs> that that he. Um, 
the way the leaders mock him, you saw Saudi Arabian leaders la like laughing at him mm -hmm. and just smart, like just whatever, because even if you would say that he got elected, every world leader knows Maduro, a lot of people are elected, yeah. you know, right. around the country, uh, around the countries around the world. But is he running this country? Is he in charge? Right. Is he just, a, is, he, is he just, they're making fun of him because they know that he's not doing anything. He's working from home. He's a remote president. Yeah. I don't even blame Joe Manchin for having that answer. The Democratic Party already sees it. The establishment media, like New York Times, Washington Post, the Basil Post is what I like to call them. But they've already <laughs> turned their back on Biden. The Democrats have already looking for that other candidate. Um, if I'm a betting man, I have my money right now on Gavin Newsom for 2024. Gavin Newsom was just invited to the White House. He was measuring yeah. the drapes. He was filling out the White House presidential seat. And I think the Democrats are positioning Gavin Newsom to be the guy because they know uh, I mean, Biden has already lost support in his own party. Yeah. Hispanics, shout Gavin out to my Hispanics. Newsom. Shout out to my Hispanics. We have them at we have them yes. at nineteen percent approval. So Hispanics actually have Biden at the lowest, and I think they're prepping Gavin Newsom. I mean, we already see him spending hundred k in ads in Florida. He's spending money here Which in Texas so attacking Abbott. I think Newsom's being positioned as that the new pretty boy so for the Democratic Party. I'm not necessarily disagreeing with you, and now I will say I. I like, I, that's not to say that I think Gavin Newsom is a good candidate. I just right, think right. that they all, they're horrible. They have no bench, right? But how do you get past, I can't figure out how you get past the optics of where does Kamala go? Because <laughs> she was just hailed as like the first black Jamaican woman, all of these yeah. titles, vice president. And then you're just going to be like, yeah, we're kind of done with her. She sucks. Like, how? How? Well, how? how do you get past the optics of that? She's been sucking for a very long to time. To a young white guy, like. <laughs> to a young white guy, yeah, correct. <laughs> and a black guy too. Yeah. But uh, uh, she doesn't discriminate. She's not discriminatory. She's not discriminatory. No. Some people like blow the way to the top, yeah. right? Like, I know. Talk about a blowout session. But I will say, uh, oh, what Lord. do you do with Kamala? Uh, I don't know. What do you do with Afghanistan? Just pull out and you let the damage be the damage that be. And you know they don't have a problem putting her somewhere. Like she, she'll probably be uh, directed to like the. The um, some sort of a cabinet position, I, mm. I would assume, mm -hmm. right? Something that's like like secretary, like they'll probably make something some new thing, like secretary of interior ministry design, you know, like I don't know, just some new, <laughs> it's like, oh, interior, interior ministry design. design. Yeah. yeah, it's like yeah, you're painting the walls, but like but but uh, you know, she she knows how to paint the walls, so I will say I will say I will say I will say I'm talking about. Sherwin Williams, we're talking about pink, please, colors, red, green, and blue. <laughs> America, please. It's a family forum. It's a family forum. For I want to say that, no, but like me, like, it's not that hard. Yeah. It's not that hard to do. It's not that hard to do to just take somebody who's already a pawn and move them on the board. That's all I, that's, that, that's all people don't understand. These are pawns on a board. Mm -hmm. So you move them around. What I want to know is who's the king and who's the real queen. Because those are the ones that are that are being guarded to this day. We don't no, directly. I still think it might be Susan Rice. I think Obama, <laughs> right? Probably, probably. All right, we got to take a quick break. We'll be back. If they ever allow us to come back. I don't know. I don't know. We just might, it just might be black. Demi Lovato, who uh, I guess, so she used to be, like, I guess she's still a singer. I don't know. I haven't heard anything from her. But she said that she was like they, them and non-binary. And now she says she's decided to go back to using she, her pronouns because uh, lately she's been feeling more of a feminine vibe, she says. So she's a fluid person, but she's feeling more feminine. So now she's she, her. By the way, she has 138 million followers. Um, how, look at how many pronouns they, do they let they, you add? She. They, them, she, her. Are, is it just endless? You can just put however many pronouns you want. It is really scary to me. She has 138 million followers. You would imagine most of them are young. Oh, God, it'd be under 20. 20. Yeah. A per perfect age to be baited into heroin addiction. I do say that the they, them, you know, you do hallucinate, from my understanding, a little bit uh, when you're having withdrawals from certain narcotics. And so you may think that there are many versions of you out there. That's usually called a, a neurotic breakdown. I pray for her to have a healing life and the best. And uh, she currently looks like a thumb. So I hope that she gets healed. Whatever, whatever made her look like that. When women look like that, they've been damaged. So, uh, <laughs> it's like so true. Elijah, going out with a bang. Jorge, last word, we got 15 seconds. So my, my standards are pretty low, but she, she makes me soft. I just look at that, I just get, get the soft feel. Soft-hearted so. for God. Well, that's yeah, it for God. me. <laughs> uh, management, email them, not me, please. All right.